Hello, my name is Jacqueline Polliff, and today I wanted to talk about trills on the harp, and I wanted to talk about those trills from a repertoire standpoint. Now, a trill is an ornament where you oscillate between two strings. And they don't come up all that often with the music, but every now and then uh, you'll have a piece that does have a trill. And generally when that happens, um, they're quite important <laughs> to the piece. And so you want to feel really good about your trill and not have it be the part of the piece that you dread, but rather have it be a, a strength within your piece of music. So I've selected five different pieces today, um, all at different levels. So they all feature a, a trill in one way or another, many of them several trills. Um, and uh, the pieces start at a fairly simple level and then uh, get a bit harder. I don't have any pieces today that are at a complete beginning level because generally a trill is a more advanced technique. So the first piece is at kind of an early intermediate level um, and then it goes on up from there. And so I'll play a little bit of each of these pieces, talk about the trills in question, and how you might approach learning them. Now, if you've never played a trill before, I have a whole separate video about that. Um, playing trills is a fairly complex technique, as I mentioned. And so generally, when I'm teaching people to play trills, um, we work on trills just by themselves and in isolation first before uh, looking at them in repertoire. And I think it can take a bit longer than some other techniques to feel comfortable with kind of the basic approach for a trill. For this video, I'm assuming that you have some knowledge of how trills work and how you go about playing them on the harp. Um, I will go over it just briefly here before we get into the repertoire to make sure that everyone is on the same page. So when playing a trill, uh, everything works in groups of two. So you use the second finger and thumb on the right hand, second finger and thumb on the left hand, and you switch between the hands. So you would play two fingers here, and then two fingers here, and then two fingers here, and two fingers here, and so on. Um, and in doing that, when you place is really important. Rather than placing in complete groups of two, you want to alternate so that you're always putting your finger and then your thumb slightly later. Um, that's the basic motion for a trill. Then there's a lot of different ways you can practice to keep your sound even, to keep the length of your notes even, and to make the whole thing faster. So as I mentioned, I have a separate video about trills, and that video is all about how to play them and how to build them up to be faster and even and all of those things. It really goes step by step. I'll put a link to that below in the description. And then I also have a set of PDF exercises that uh, goes along with all of those different practice approaches and ways to learn a trill. And I'll put a link to that in the description as well. The first piece that I wanted to look at today is a minuet written by Jean-Jacques Rousseau. And this is arranged for the harp by Samuel Milligan. And it comes from Milligan's book, Medieval to Modern, Volume 1. Uh, this is a fairly short piece written at an early intermediate level. It's playable on a lever harp and it contains just one trill. I think this is a great choice for a first piece with a trill because this trill is quite straightforward. So overall the piece is written in an AABA form and the trill comes at the end of the B section. So I'll go ahead and play a bit of that. A couple of aspects to this trill that help to keep it quite simple. One is that there's not much else going on at the same time. So your left hand plays a chord with the initial note of the trill, but then after that the only thing happening in the measure is the trill itself. Uh, another nice aspect to it is that it doesn't need to be particularly rhythmic. Uh, it's written with just a fermata over it, meaning that you can take as long as you would like. So there's no need to uh, keep it very rhythmic fitting into a particular number of beats. So if this is one of the first times you've played a trill, 
I would focus on um, having an even trill, even in terms of the length of the notes and even in terms of sound, but I wouldn't worry about playing it really quickly. I think that's a skill that comes uh, kind of down the line <laughs> in learning and practicing trills. So when I played the uh, excerpt of the piece just now, I played it at uh, quite a quick speed, but I don't think you need to do it that way. I'm going to play um, just the measure before and then the trill at a slower, more of a, a student tempo. Next, I wanted to look at La Gimblet by Bernard Andres. This is a, another intermediate level piece playable on the lever harp. And La Gimblet is a theme and variations. And the third variation centers around trills, which is obviously great from the standpoint of wanting to practice trills within a piece of music. Um, what's particularly nice about this is that it's uh, written in a sequence. So for the first um, part of this variation, each measure contains a trill along with a few melody notes. And then the next measure has the uh, same setup, just shifted down a string. So the same feel of a trill and melody notes, but all just down a string. And then the third measure, once again, everything is the same, but shifted down another string. So I'll go ahead and play uh, the first few measures of this. So in learning this, first I would isolate the trills and just focus on those. Um, Andres has all of the trills written to start off with a four note chord. And he has that notated that your left hand plays three notes of that chord, your right hand plays the fourth note, and at the same time also plays the first note of the trill. And you could certainly play it that way, but one um, option to redistribute that is to put uh, all four notes of the chord in the left hand, so that way your right hand just has to focus on the trill. Either way works. I think it's just a matter of personal preference. Um, so anyway, so I would start by just practicing the chords with the trills, jumping around to each measure. And if you're feeling comfortable with that, then I think the next step, and the part that many people find most challenging about this piece, is that these trills need to be quite rhythmic. So this variation is written in 9-8, and the trills are uh, written to cover the first five eighth notes of each measure, and then the melody is the other four eighth notes of each measure. So one strange thing about um, making a trill really rhythmic is that you just want it to fill up the space. So you want to trill for as long as necessary and then stop. Um, and normally we think about it the other way around. We think about having a particular number of notes that equal a particular number of beats. So it kind of has to uh, flip your thinking <laughs> and your counting a little bit. But I'll go ahead and do a demonstration of a way to practice this. Um, I will count out loud and uh, play the first three measures of this. Um, I'm going to count one and a, two and a, three and a, which is a fairly common way to count in nine eight. And I'll just think about having the trills last five eighth notes. When I get to that fifth eighth note, I'll finish off the trill and then move on to the next part of the melody. So here we go. A one and a, two and a, three and a, one and a, two and a, three and a, one and a, two and a, three and a, one. Now we have the Aria in Rigadon, written by Gottfried Kirchhoff and transcribed for the harp by Marcel Grangeny. Uh, this is playable only on a pedal harp. And I would say it's um, still sort of within the realm of an intermediate piece, but definitely a bit trickier than either of the other two we've looked at so far today. So sort of moving along <laughs> that continuum of intermediate pieces. Um, the first piece, the aria, ends with a very dramatic trill. I'll go ahead and play um, from the start of the preceding phrase. <laughs> Thank you. 
So as always, I would start by just isolating the trill and practicing that. And one practice approach you could use for this or for any trill um, is to practice with accents, which will actually help to build an even sound. So you could start by accenting um, a specific finger, say the left hand second finger. And then you could work through each of the other fingers in turn. You could also um, accent in groups of three. And although it seems counterintuitive, <laughs> uh, practicing with accents is really just about practicing uh, highly specific control. So in the end, that will help you have more control over an even sound within your trill. And then for this trill in particular, uh, if you're looking at the music, you'll notice that Grangini has notated every note of the trill. As we were discussing with the last couple of tr um, pieces, frequently trills are unmeasured, meaning that the composer provides information about the pitches needed, and then you as the performer uh, fill in exactly how many notes you need for that trill. But here Grangini has written out every single note of the trill using grace notes. And um, in some ways this is nice because it's really unambiguous, <laughs> but it also can be difficult to count up and make sure that you're doing the exact number of notes that he wants. So one trick I use for that is I usually count the number of left-hand groups. So that way I'm not trying to count individual notes when I'm playing really fast. I'm just counting groups and I'm just counting the left hand to keep it even simpler. Um, so here for this trill, Grangini wants you to have four left hand groups. So as I'm playing, I would think like this. One, two, three, four. And that's how I know exactly how long <laughs> to make this trill uh, and match what Grangini wrote. So I think uh, once you're feeling good about the trill, you could practice that way, making sure that it's the exact number of notes as indicated. And then for the final step, I would go ahead and put in the um, grace notes that lead into it and the 16th notes that lead out of it. This next piece is the Divertissement à l'Espagnol, written by André Caplet. And this is an advanced level piece, playable only on a pedal harp. And it's filled with all kinds of uh, really fun techniques, but there are some trills in particular that stand out. Now, there are a lot of trills overall in the piece, and many are quite straightforward. But there are two sections where he has trills, um, where you're trilling and moving your pedals at the same time, so that the pitch of the trill is changing. Um, I can't think of another piece off the top of my head that does anything quite like this. It's fairly unique. So I'm going to play uh, a little bit leading into it and then the section uh, with the trill and the moving paddle. So the way this section works is there are actually three different trills that you're moving between. The first trill is on a C sharp and a D flat string. Then for the second trill, you stay on the same strings and just move your pedals. So then you have a C natural D flat. But then for the third trill, you have to both move your pedal and jump to new strings. So that one is a B natural C flat trill. Um, and I think in order to be successful with this trill, you need to be really precise, both with moving your pedal and with jumping to those different strings and back. Um, you could take it apart and practice both things separately. Just work on uh, counting and moving your pedal, and then maybe just work on playing your trill without moving your pedal, but focusing on the jump between the different strings. Um, then when you put it all together, I would uh, probably count it out and um, make sure that I'm being very precise with the number of groups that I'm playing and when I'm jumping to those new strings. And then also tie the pedal into that so that I'm moving the pedal on particular counts. So I'm going to play it and count the right hand groups and think about all of those uh, things being precise with the pedal and the number of groups. So one, two, three, one, one, two, three, one, one, two, 
three, one, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, four, five. For our final piece today, I wanted to look at something that I'm sure many harpists are very familiar with. Uh, this comes from Benjamin Britten's A Ceremony of Carols. And unlike the other pieces we've looked at today, which are all for solo harp, uh, this is an ensemble piece. Britton wrote this piece for women's chorus and harp. And it's written at an advanced level, playable only on a pedal harp. Um, a Ceremony of Carols is made up of many short pieces. Uh, the one that we're going to look at today is the eighth piece called In Freezing Winter Night. And this consists entirely of trills for the harp. Um, one tricky thing about this <laughs> is that it starts out just using the standard two note trills and then Britain gradually adds in more and more notes. So what you're playing is uh, the same idea, but technically it's called a bisbigliando, where rather than just a two note trill, he has um, three notes and four notes, um, six notes in some spots. I think there's a few seven notes as well. Uh, so in all of those instances, you're using the same idea where you're just oscillating between the strings, but there's a lot more to keep track of in all of that. I'll go ahead and play a bit of the first section of In Freezing Winter Night. One of the challenges of this is that you want all of your trills and bisbigliandi to match. So regardless of how many notes or how awkward the shape might be, um, everything sounds the same. And I think a great way to practice that would be to practice actually with your eyes closed so that you can really focus in on the sound. Um, you could leave off sort of the notes that surround everything and maybe just start with a trill. Listen for evenness with the sound and the length in that, then jump to the next measure. See if everything still sounds equally even. Then I have to look and see, all right, that's the next measure. And then I jump to the next one with the eyes closed again. And you could work through the whole piece uh, doing that. I think that would be a great approach. And of course, you can use that with anything that you're working on. Um, with trills in general, closing your eyes, as silly as it might seem, uh, really can help focus your ear and uh, highlight how even or not uh, a particular trill is. In conclusion, I hope that you've gotten some ideas for a repertoire and some uh, approaches for learning and practicing the trills within that repertoire. Uh, good luck to you with all of your trills.